Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I have another update related to the SVG image designs that we've recently gotten an update for where in front of us here, there's yet another design that I've created another type of bullet chart that we're going to integrate into the table. And this will likely be part one of two of a video series continuing with a lot of creativity with these SVG images. I have an idea for yet another type of bullet chart related to the IBCS standards that I'm hoping to implement that will take a little bit more coding logic to figure out, but I want to introduce this first one here in this video and how I built this. So with that being said, let's hop into Power BI and get started. So to start the conversation, let's discuss what exactly this type of bullet chart is doing. We basically have two bars that are built into it, somewhat adhering to the IBCS standards where we have an actual and a comparison bar that are in line with each other. Now, looking at this top row as an example, that gray larger bar is the actual value and it will use that red smaller bar that's overlaid above and to the right of it to finish the journey up to whatever target or comparison value there is. Now, if the actual is below the target, I've chosen to color this red, and you can see inversely with some of these green ones, let's take a look at the grand total down here at the bottom as an example. What this implies is the actual is actually grown to that much above the actual target. So the target itself is on the left side where the green is ending, and the actual is that much past in terms of about maybe 150%, a uh, total value of the actual comparison value into there. So it basically then feeds into the bar as it goes past it, but then it's in front of the bar as it falls behind. So that's the principle that we have for the design of this. I'll link you to some IBS links as well as some custom visuals that also incorporate this in line into the visualization themselves outside of using some custom SVG. But now that we understand the functionality of this, let's go ahead and explore how this was written in DAX. So I'm going to open this up and what I tried to do is build this out with a lot of notes and a lot of variables. So the first thing that we'll have here are three variables declared for the base metric, the variable below color, variable above color. So you can set whatever hex or RGB code you would like into here. I went ahead and commented out the colors that are being used, but that's where those colors are coming in. Similar to my previous SVG video, we also have where the metrics are and the comparisons that are all captured under the metrics section here. The actual actual comparison, the variance between the two here, and then the max actual, because that's actually needed to create the axis range. So you can see below this, this is the total axis range between the comparison and the max actual, grabbing the value from that. So this essentially helps me determine what the maximum range is on the left. So a lot of these can all be comparatively sized between each other for each of these either categories or subcategories built into this table. So considering all the looks and everything that we see in here. Moving down the list, we can see the note where it keeps the bar sizes relative to the min-max size for all the rows. And that's also where those ranges are coming in here, just to allow for those size comparisons. Now, the things that I want to call out below is the variance bar width. Now, this is important because, again, technically what's happening right here is the start point for any one of these red or green bars is actually either at the very end of the actual bar or it starts technically, and by start, I imply left to right, or it's starting from somewhere inside of the bar itself. So technically, depending on the way the visuals are being rendered and whether or not actuals are above or below the comparison, there's a separate starting point left to right for that bar. So again, context for how the visual needs to render. Coming back to this, this basically keeps an absolute to so the variance bar width. I always am going to know how big the bar needs to be, but I'm using ABS to return the absolute value, which will always be the proper width or length of the bar, regardless of where it starts. But since sometimes an actual comparison can actually go positive or negative, that is why I'm using the ABS to return the absolute value for that. Now, here's where some of the logic came in. The variance bar start. So again, that's the starting point for this bar. If the actual is less than the comparison value for row one, as the example, the bar needs to start at the end of that. Now for when the actual is greater than the variance bar, let's use that total bar here at the bottom. The start point of that green bar actually needs to be where the end of the comparison is, and then it has to grow to meet however far further to the right the actual bar went. So that's why their starting point is separate in there. Coming back to here, 
That is essentially what this is doing. It's doing an if statement, checking to see about the comparison value of greater than or equal to zero, and either starting from the actual bar width, the individual if it's less than that, or the plan bar width. So that's where the two starting points are coming in. That's how it has the ability to either start from inside of the actual bar if it's passed, or on the end of it if it's below. So that logic is explained there with some notes. And then the color essentially is returning one of those two. And then similar to in a previous video where I used Carrie's bullet chart, I modified the query here a little bit to provide the two bars. So this top one here is going to return the actual bar. And that always starts at the same point. It's using the widths and all the other specified requirements in here with some height adjustments. I'm trying to use percentages in here rather than actual pixel differences. So that in theory means that as you adjust the image size built in to any of the matrix tables between here, it should automatically scale, hopefully a little bit more easily. But with that being said, the bottom one here is where that extra logic comes in. I'm concatenating together where the bar starting point is, the length using the absolute values, because SVGs always require a positive number to grow the bar left to right, and then whatever that color might be. So that's how it's able to change dynamically. So it was very fun to build this out. I enjoyed trying to figure out the logic to get that bar and subbar to kind of grow and show into each other appropriately. I have a few other ideas to implement some other IBCS normalized to goal bullet charts as well, but this one is a pretty fun starting point to incorporate and share with you all so far. And with any of my videos, I love to hear your comments, suggestions, or how you might implement this, any changes you might suggest to make. So as always, drop those down into the comments below. If you like this video, check out some of my related content here in the upper right. Other videos for my channel are available there. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this content. And otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.